Nightline is brought to you by the Dever Team, your source for New Smyrna Beach real estate and everything else New Smyrna Beach. Go to www.thedeverteam.com and call UCF alumni Travis Dever for all your New Smyrna Beach needs. 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. I'm Jeff Allen, and welcome to this special series of podcasts called Nightline 79 Rewind. Last summer and into the beginning of the 2020 season, I interviewed several players that were on UCS first football team in 1979 for the Nightline podcast in honor of 40 years of UCF football. While nostalgia continues to be front and center while we wait for the resumption of college football, we thought we would bring these interviews back as their own podcast so that we could relive these great memories once again. Jim Taylor was a receiver on the night's first ever football team, and he was not even looking to play football after high school. We'll hear his story right after this. Hello, Night fans. It's Roger, a.k.a. Night Bangle, and I'm excited to announce that I'll be joining you and Andrew Fagley in writing the long-awaited next chapter of UCF's first podcast, Nightline. I'm ecstatic to share the latest news with you weekly as our nights win on the field, on the court, and in the classroom. Remember to tune in starting August 10th for the best news and content on your favorite Coast to Coast podcast reboot. That's right, Nightline 3.0 will be returning to the airwaves wherever you choose to download our podcast. Charge on! And now, our Nightline 79 Rewind conversation with wide receiver Jim Taylor. Jim, we thank you for joining us as we look back at the first ever UCF football team in 1979. How did you land to be a member of the Knights by way of Gainesville, Florida? Oh, well, um, that's kind of a long, not a long story, but a story in itself. Um, well, I was a three sport athlete at Beatles High School up in Gainesville. I uh, played basketball, football, and baseball. By the time I was a senior, I was a starter in all three. You know, the guard, or the first baseman, and um, batted fourth. And then in football, I played tight end and wide receiver and free safety. So it's, I was like a lot of 17, 18 year olds after my senior season. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just kind of lost. Never got recruited by anybody. And um, so I was like, so my mom took me up to Valdosta State to see about getting to their baseball program. Because I really liked baseball. I didn't like football, you know. did not like high school football. didn't mind the games or the practices. Because mm-hmm. uh, apparently the coaches, they just let you do, they make you do kind of some crazy drills that has nothing to do with your position, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, I went up there, and they didn't, they didn't even take a look at me because they had just won the college little league, little Championship World Series or something, so they said they were full. So now I was going to go to the Marines. You know, I signed up. I went down there, took the test and everything, and the sergeant kept calling me every day. My mom uh, was not too happy with that because my dad was in the military for 32 years, so we traveled all over the world. And um, so she was like, she didn't really let me do that. So I had a cousin living down here, which is way, well, she's way older than me, and she saw a little ad in the paper that you used to have to start a football team. So, you know, I went down there. Well, I didn't want to go. I was like, no, 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 I'm done with football. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you know? My mom's like, no, no, no. Because I had quit when I was in second grade. And my mom's like, the Taylor boys always play football. You're not quitting. I said, I don't like it. You know, she's like, no, your older brother Jack and your older brother Charlie play football. You're playing football. All the Taylor boys. <laughs> so I did quit. And I came back in the third grade. And I played it ever since, you know. So anyway, went down there. My mom and dad, you know, my dad's in the military, thirty years, Lieutenant Colonel, and mom's an officer's wife. So that they know, you know, they know how to proceed through uh, situations. Uh, they just got out, and went, I said, "Yeah, you know, Jim, go to the coaches." Nope, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I'm in the back of the, uh, the station wagon, I'm like, nope, not getting out. I'm good. <laughs> I'm looking around. It's like I don't know, man. It seemed like a thousand people out there for me, you know. All these grown men with beards, you know, I'm like, <laughs> big dudes, I mean, big guys, you know. I mean, I was in high school, and we had some big kids, but these are grown men. I'm like, I am not going to be playing with them guys. I'm good. <laughs> you know, so, they finally found Coach Jonas. They brought him over, you know. And then, Coach Johnson, he's like, Jimmy Taylor, tell me how many of you are doing that. I stepped out of the back of the station wagon, and 
this time. You just have a plan of what you are looking for. We want you to come around. And I was like, okay, good, you know. So we get back in the car and I drove back to Gainesville. And um, I was trying to say no to my parents, but then they were like, you need to put on a skills challenge to go down there, you know. I was like, I did. I told my dad on there. So um, Tommy Bland called me the next day and um, to get my information. I think it was the next day, maybe the next week, and I had a little mini camp, they called it, and I didn't know what a mini camp was. You know, I drove down here by myself, and we met in the back of this elementary school, you know, you know, Baldwin Park. And we had all these um, 15, 20 kids running, running routes. And um, so, uh, he had this one route that he loved. It's called the Point of Comeback. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was a wide receiver in high school, but not, not a great one, because we didn't really have a... I only taught 12 passes. I was a wide receiver. Played mostly defense back for safety. So he like, he shows us how, because he, he was a guy that played, I don't know if you know Tommy Bryant, he played in playing a football league forever and was a receiver for Coach Jonas. Mm-hmm. And so um, he ran his little comeback route. You know, he's, he's a pretty good route runner. And um, the first guy, like the curl, you know, another guy did go route. And it's like he was so mad. It was, it was, you know, I didn't say it was funny. It was kind of frightening me. I was like, well, hey. so it was my turn, you know. And um, so I ran, and he wanted us to run the comeback, catch the ball, turn up field five yards, and sprint back and put the ball right down next to the center. You know, that was, you know, I was really good at mimicking people as far as, you know, you show me something, I can do it. So I ran the co- co- corner comeback, caught the ball around, you know, did everything. He's like, can you do that again? I was like, uh, yeah, I can do it again. I did that, and he goes, oh, this guy, you want to curl? And I ran the curl, and I did it. So then, uh, you know, a couple of weeks went by, and then, you know, they had the camp, and they, they invited me to camp, and then I was on the UCF football team, and I made the travel roster that first year. Didn't play a lot, but I was on the travel roster, went to every game. So did my parents. They, were the, they went to every game. My parents went to every game the first four years. Wow. Home and away. Wow. Yeah, they traveled all over the place, <laughs> almost in their little station wagon. But, yeah. <laughs> So, so that's how I came about to be there. Yeah. So in your playing career at UCF, uh, I, I believe you were the team's leading receiver in the third season. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was a junior. Mm-hmm. I was a junior. Freshman year, like I said, didn't play a lot. Um, sophomore season, the fourth game of the season, I blew up my ankle, tore up my ligaments. I got back in the game. The last game of the season, I, caught, I think I caught two passes that game. So and that was before... We didn't talk about redshirting, you know. I should have redshirted that year because mm-hmm. I had a medical redshirt, but I didn't know. You know, I was just I was just a kid. And and so yeah, so the third season when I came back after the injuries, you know, I was the leading receiver. I think I had the most yards, most yards in a game, most catches in a game, longest yard with seventy yard touchdowns with no saps. <laughs> no saps. <laughs> and um I don't know if I had the most touchdowns or not. I don't know. But yeah. So is that seventy? Is that seventy yard uh, play the one you remember the most uh, from your playing days? No, well, I, you know, I remember a lot of plays, but that is a that is a really good play because my mom highlighted it on every little scrapbook, and she put the guy's picture. And she cut his the guy that was covering me's pictures out, you know, from their um, programs and put it in as my you know they take a lot of pictures of me scoring and stuff. But one that I remember the most, which it's really, you know. Against Eastern Kentucky, our last game of my senior season, we were 0 9 that year. I didn't play. They, the coach benched me for some reason. Mm-hmm. You know? And I don't blame him. Looking back on it, I don't really blame him because we had a new coach. We well, wasn't a new coach. He was the assistant coach the year before. Mm-hmm. And then he became a head coach the next year. Yeah, and Sammy so Weir, right? He came to me that summer, right? Mm-hmm. And said, uh, We're going to change the offense. We're going to run the wing key. You know? I don't know what that meant. But it sounds good to me. <laughs> he goes, here's, you know, I had no idea, you know, we were running the spread. You know, we were running the running gun, mm-hmm. basically, before it really became that, you know, because Coach Jonas was a throwing guy, you know. We threw a lot. Yes. So then, um, we were running the um, wing team. He said, I'm going to show you some film. This is, I'm going to show you the position I want you to, to, to do. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm there all summer working out and everything. So he shows me I'm on the H back. I'm the guy outside the tight end, you know, yep. like not really a slot guy, but like more of a 
right outside the tight end, but in the backfield. Hmm. And this guy would do a go in motion, and he would go straight up behind the center and block a linebacker. Yep. Or he would crack out back down on the defensive end. And I'm like, I ain't that guy. <laughs> there was one receiver way on the outside, and I was like, that's that's me. You know, I want to be that guy. <laughs> you know. I basically just told them, no. You know, coaches don't want to hear that. They just want, you know, they want to, if they jump, you just say how high. You know, they don't want no answers, questions. I understand that because I'm a coach now. You know, it's like, dude, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it. But, you know, me being young and thinking on that because I was a leading receiver, you know, I'm like, why would I be like, like, blocking a defensive lineman? I, or, yeah, or linebacker. I want to stay away from them guys, man. <laughs> guys hurt me. You know, I catch the ball right out of bounds, man. You know, I'm not, I'm not that guy. So he didn't like that. So you know, of course, I got, I got benched. I didn't play a lot. Um, I think I had, um, had 200 yards, five catches for 200 yards and two touchdowns that year. Mm. That's a real good game. Yeah, <laughs> but not a season. <laughs> <laughs> so the the most memorable play was against Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, I got to bring it back to that because. Uh, I had to bring that story up because Eastern Kentucky was our last game of the season. They were they were number one in the nation in mm-hmm. Division Two, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and they were eleven and or ten and zero at the at the time. We were zero and nine at the time. And I think it was right before the half. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. You know, because you know, and then finally he, he puts me in. I think we had come out of the winning team by that point of the season. You know, because now you can just do something. Because the wing team ain't working. So we go in there. I go in there. And um, I, they, they had a play call, but um, Dyson was the quarterback. And he wanted to put, he, he wanted to, um, he would have made the um, Dallas Cowboy roster. That was if Danny White got hurt. Mm-hmm. And he was running the fourth quarterback, and he didn't want to be fourth team quarter, fourth string quarterback. So he left camp. Two weeks later, Danny White goes down. And then the next quarterback goes down. So he would have been the guy with the clipboard. Wow. In the state. But I know. He's a big kid, big, strong quarterback. I mean, yeah, I went, to, like I, went to high, I went to high school with him. So I, I oh, really you did? Yes. Oh, you know about him. Yes, guy. yeah. Kid, he's no joke, man. Yep. Good, good, dude. Really good, salt to the earth kid. Guy and man now. Sure. Yes. Grandfather. <laughs> Great grandfather, probably by now. So, um,. Yeah, so he's quarterback, and he sees me in there. He sees, because he, he's the one that threw me all the passes the year before. So he sees me in the huddle. He's like, Jimmy, you in here? I said, yeah. He goes, forget that play. We're going to run the post. You, can you get a post in this guy? I said, oh, and, you know, I'm always going to say yes, because I'm a receiver and I want the ball. I don't know anything about the guy, because I really wasn't paying attention to the game, because I didn't think I was going to get in. Uh, so he's like, I said, yeah, I can, I can run this. He's like, so he's, uh, 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 he ran the post. We both went up for the ball. And I think I saw a film of it, and I know it wasn't really a great looking post. I think I rushed my route a little bit. Because um, usually on the post, I can get away from a guy, but the guy was right on me. They threw the ball. We both jump up for it. He falls. I catch it. 64 yard touchdown. Boom. Now we're, we're either tied or up in Eastern Kentucky going into half. Okay. So, yeah, and I didn't play another play that rest, that rest of that game. <laughs> it was like, okay, so good. Yeah, it's like what else can you what else can you do, right? Uh, I know. <laughs> you know. One catch, one touchdown. It's all good, man. It's good stat, you know. One catch for sixty four yards. So, yeah, Jim, so. so Jim, when you look at uh, when you look at UCF now and uh, and and what they've become as a national brand, a team that wins championships. Um, as you look, as you look back from when it all started to what it is now, is it is it was it conceivable then? It took too long. I mean, I don't know why it took so long. I mean, <laughs> just just if you just recruit out of the Central Florida area, I mean, every team in the nation comes here, except for maybe the West Coast guys in the Northwest. But most of all the teams in the in the nation come here because my son was a um, offensive lineman at Eastridge High School in Lake County. Just mm-hmm. a, I mean, if you don't know Lake County, you're not going to know what Eastridge is, you know? Right. They have 52 Division One coaches come and look at them. Wow. I mean, they come here for talent. They don't come here for offensive linemen, obviously, but they come here for special guys. But, I mean, you, shoot. I mean, look at all the kids that get rec- recruited out of here, you know? Like mm-hmm. my roommate got recruited out for Western Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think it took way, way, way too long. It doesn't surprise me at all. 
this in that first season when we when we started when we started that first season it was a club team of course no scholarships no nothing no they didn't buy your cleats and everything I had to live in the haystacks with two offensive linemen <laughs> oh gosh the haystack I <laughs> I remember that remember that <laughs> yeah and they're still there I don't think they call the haystacks but they're still there yeah I was I was out there it's crazy I know but um yeah and so I mean. It, that first year was six and two. We were destroying teams, not destroying, destroying them. But as you know, back in the day, you know, if you win fourteen to six, you know, dang, we killed them. You know, now <laughs> if you don't score fifty plus, then it's like, what are you doing? You know, you're dropping the rankings. I mean, you could score now, but um, yeah, I think it just took too long. You know, and I, so. But now that we're here, fault. it's a. But now that we're here, it's a pretty glorious time. Right. Oh my gosh, you kidding me? Yes, this is the. Everybody knows UCF. I wear, I, you know, all I have to do is mention I went there. And they're like, oh, man, yeah, my daughter goes there. My best goes there. My cousin went there. I know a guy that played on the team there. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's cool. It's very cool. Everybody knows UCF. And it's great that we're getting the, the, the Gator fans are starting to talk trash to us, you know, because mm-hmm. before they didn't even, they didn't, you know, we're a second, third, fourth thought. I mean, they didn't care, you know. Mm-hmm. But now that we're taking some of their kids, and I, you know, and my thought is that I've talked a lot of, I, I'm from Gainesville, obviously, mm-hmm. Gainesville. I was there since sixth grade, up through high school. You know, a lot of Gator fans, you know, a lot, these guys are, and that's the kind of fans we need. We need guys like that, or women like that, mm-hmm. you know, they were just bleed black and gold. These people, they paint their houses orange and blue. Yep. I mean, it's, an, yeah. So I've told them, I said, listen, the days of the Gators are going to just run over everybody are over, and it's not because you guys are any worse. It's just because the talent pool is getting less and less because there's, back in the day, there was only, really only three colleges in Florida to go to. You know, it's Miami, South Florida, I mean, um, FSU in Miami, and Gators, right? Mm-hmm. It was family and Bethune Cookman. I'm talking about Division One top powerhouse teams. Now, I don't know, they're like, I don't know, 12? College teams, you know? yeah, it's a lot. You know, in the I ones, because my son went to SEU, you know. And that, have you been down there to Lakeland to the SEU campus? I have not. Oh my, it's like a resort. <laughs> I'm telling you, it looks like Saint Saint Augustine's got cobblestone pathways on campus stadium. They have a fireworks show. They have a fire, so they got these giant fireballs come out when the team runs out. I mean, it. The stands are packed. I mean, standing room only mm. for home games. It is insane, yes. Astro Turf Field, which the stadium is like a walk from their from their dorm room to the stadium. I mean, it's that close. It's like, psh, psh. so, I mean, that's the kind of thing you're there. You know, let's say you don't, you know, you're going to go to the Gators and you're going to be, oh, well, you're, you're a two-star or whatever recruit. That doesn't really matter anyway. But you're not going to play right away. You may play when you're a junior or senior if you make it through all the trials and tribulations. If you come to you and say, hey, start right away what are you going to do as a kid you know yeah so yeah well jim i certainly do appreciate you taking the time to uh relive some of your uh, memories of the, the the first years of ucf football and uh again thank you for being part of our show all right you're welcome i appreciate you calling me thank you Raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney is our commitment to you at Chad Bar Law. I'm Chad Bar, and as a UCF alum, I am proud to present Nightline at Night, Central Florida's only call-in show dedicated to our UCF nights, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. And remember, if you or a loved one are injured in an auto accident, call us at 407-599-9036 to schedule your free consultation or visit us at chadbarlaw.com. Offices, Altamont Springs. Go Knights. Charge on. Thanks for joining us for this Nightline 79 Rewind, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at UCF underscore Nightline, and you can follow me as well at Jeff Allen underscore 88. And please like and share all of our Nightline Sports Network programming on social media and where you get your podcasts. For Nightline 79 Rewind, I'm Jeff Allen. Stay well and stay safe.